bow before God Jehovah. There's coming a day that every knee is going to bow and every tongue is going to confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. You may not have time here on earth today. And you may not have time next Sunday. But there's going to be a time that you're going to make time. And you're going to ask God to forgive you. But you know what he's going to say if the blood's not there? If you don't have the right credentials, he's going to say, depart from me, you workers of iniquity, you sinners. Depart from me because you've got to have the genuine thing to get into heaven. Read what it says here in Matthew 22, 8. And he said, they, then said he to his servants, the wedding is ready, but they which were bidden were not worthy. He said, I invited a lot of good people to come, but they weren't worthy. They didn't have time for me. They didn't, they, they, they wouldn't do, they wouldn't obey my word. They wouldn't keep my commandments. They wouldn't do anything. They wouldn't, they wouldn't go through the, the right procedure. To get the right credentials. They don't just mail these things out because you ask them to. There's a lot that has to go into getting a passport. Paperwork to be filled out. It has to be filled out properly. History has to be checked. Pictures have to be right. And you send it off and it costs you to get that. It's something that you have to do. It's a lot of time involved in getting a passport. Well, here he said they were not worthy. Why? Because they wouldn't spend the time. They wouldn't, they wouldn't learn what had to be done to obtain the right credentials to get into this wedding feast. Go ye therefore into the highways, and as many as ye shall find, bid them to the marriage. He said, go out and invite the Gentiles, the Jews. Invite everybody to come. Give them an open invitation to get their credentials in order that they might come to my feast. That get, you know, do whatever they have to do. Give them an opportunity to go get their garments cleaned. You know, when you're getting ready to go somewhere and it's a special occasion, you don't wear your, your you may not have the finest clothes, but you want them clean if you're going to go somewhere to a wedding. You want to make sure that your clothes are, are in good uh, condition and everything. He said, give them an opportunity to get their garments dry cleaned. Give them an opportunity to go do their laundry. Give them an opportunity to get their lives cleaned up that they might come to this feast. Give them an opportunity to be born again. Give them the opportunity to hear the gospel. Go and invite them to church. Go and invite them to, to come into my house. Give them that opportunity that they might know that they're precious to me and they're special to me. So the servants went out into the highways and gathered together as many as they found, both bad and good, and the wedding was furnished with guests. And when the king came in to see the guest, he saw there a man which had not on a wedding garment. And he said unto him, Friend, how camest thou in hither, not having a wedding garment? And he was speechless. And many, joining by television, and uh, hopefully not in here, but many are going to be speechless that day. As you stand before God, thinking that everything is all right, Many are going to be speechless when the trump of God sounds and the shout comes, come up hither. Many are going to be speechless because they're planning to, to go up with everyone else. But they're going to be left behind. Why? Because they don't have the right documents. They don't have the right credentials to get in. And many are going to call and say, Lord, Lord, have we not done this and have we not done that? And what does the Bible say he says to them? He says to them, depart from me, you workers of iniquity. I never knew you. I never knew you. And church, I'm telling you today that many people have my knowledge of Christ uh, that think when that trumpet sounds, they're going to be able to slip in with the rest of us. Uh, how many of you think that my mom and daddy is good Christians? Uh, I'm going to be able to get in on their coattail. Uh, I mean, my, my, my grandma was a praying woman. Uh, I know that God's going to speak me because of her. I've done good all my life. I know I'm going to make it in. But let me tell you something. Except you be born again, you're not going to see the kingdom of God. Except you be born again, you're not going to enter the kingdom of God. And it's time today that every child of God knows that you're somebody special. That God just don't pass out those passports to anyone. He called you. He chose you. The Bible says in John, He said, you didn't choose me. I chose you. And praise God, we're special today. And when we've got our documents in order, 
expire. Uh, praise God, we know that that passport uh, is not going to expire in 10 years. Uh, we know that that passport's going to be good throughout eternity because he said, I'll never leave you. I'll never forsake you. I'll be with you all the way to the end. Uh, and that end is when the trumpet sounds. Uh, that end is when the voice of God says, come up hither. That's when time as we know it here on this earth shall end for us. Uh, and he said, it's good all the way. Hallelujah. And when you get there and the blood has been applied, when you get to that gate uh, and you start go before Christ, uh, he's going to see the blood. God's going to see the blood and he's going to say, enter in thy good and faithful servant. Uh, Why? Well, because the blood is there. It's a stamp of approval. Uh, this passport's got a stamp of the United States government. And when they see that stamp, uh, they say, come on in, brother. They scan that passport and they see that it's genuine. They say, enter in, brother. But let me tell you something. If you're not, if it's not genuine, they'll bind you and they'll take you off. And this man here had tried to get into the marriage supper of the Lamb. He had tried to get in. He was speechless in verse 13. The king then said the king to the servant, Bind him hand and foot, and take him away, and cast him into outer darkness, and there shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. For many are called, but few are chosen. And that's the same thing the government will do to you if you don't have the right credentials. They'll bind you and take you away and cast you into jail until they find out or until they get. They'll hold you. They're not, you're not a, no longer a free man. They'll hold you until you prove who you are. And this is what I'm trying to tell the people this morning. God is telling me to tell you that you better get your credentials in order. You better quit playing games. And a lot of Christians joining by television right here in this county. You know that you're not in the right church. You know you're not sitting under the gospel of Jesus Christ. You know you're not seeing the fruits of your labor. You know, praise God, that you're not seeing the outreach that God says you'll see in the Word. And you know that, praise the Lord, you're, getting, you're, you're, you're following tradition instead of getting out and doing what God has called you to do. And I'm telling you, it's time that you open your eyes. And it's time that, praise God, you took up your cross and followed Jesus Christ. It's time for this church to come alive. I'm talking to each and every one of you at 10 10 o'clock on Sunday mornings uh, at 10 o'clock you listen to me you may not like it but at 10 o'clock uh, you need to be in your seat right here praising the name of the Lord uh, you don't need to be here at 10 5 or 10 15 or 10 30 you need to be in your house and in your seat I uh, uh, praise God at 10 o'clock uh, uh, lifting up the hands to Jesus uh, and praying and many of you need to get to this altar and pray for repentance before you ever go to your seat uh, you need to be asking God you need to come serving God come serving the Lord hallelujah and make sure if you have to get up at 4 o'clock in the morning to get here at 10 you need to be here you mamas you need your children in here at 10 o'clock getting to Sunday school we couldn't even have Sunday school this morning because the kids weren't here and you say well hold it now you're stepping on my toes I'm not I'm not aiming this at any person this is what God is telling me to tell and that's exactly what I'm going to do I can I can beat around the bush or I can tell it like it is and God said you better tell it like it is and I'm just telling it like it is. And, and we've got the same problem in our church here. We've got people that are dragging their feet. They're waiting for somebody else to do everything. And that's not the way a child of God's supposed to be. You're supposed to be first in line saying, Lord, send me. Here I am, Lord. I, use me. I'll do whatever, Lord. If it means vacuuming the floor, vacuum it. Washing the windows, wash them. Picking up trash, do it. Mowing grass, do it. But we got to get off of this comfort zone and waiting for everybody else to do everything. And that's exactly what God is saying. Get your credentials in order. If you have, listen to me carefully. You know, when James was talking about, and, and, and when he was talking about faith, and when he was talking about works, when we, when we get into the Bible and we go to studying about works and faith, if you've got the genuine passport, if you've got the genuine identity, the genuine, genuine credentials, there's something that comes with that. There's something that comes with the genuine credentials, and that's the desire to serve the Lord with your fullest. That's the, that, that, that desire is there to do the work of the Lord. That desire is so strong that you'll set aside what is important to you, and you'll go 